All right, today we're going to start assignment seven for photography. And it's all about visual storytelling. And in this project, we have the ability to use three or more separate exposures to turn into a visual story of one scene. So that happens all in the same place at the same time. So we start with sketches, and I'm going to give you some examples. And instead of sketching just for lighting or sketching just for composition, here we are going to be sketching for narrative to try to get an idea of how to control our story. So this is my sketchbook, and what I do is first figure out what my subject matter might be. And so when I say a scene, what I mean is it's like the, um, the theater definition of a scene. When you have a scene in a play, good. it's all about what props are needed, what sets are needed, what lighting is needed. So first I'm going to set my scene. Okay, and this is going to be a creepy scene. And it's going to be um, the aftermath of a teenage party. And maybe this is a professional job. Maybe I've gotten hired by Teen Beat magazine to do a photo essay about the dangers of prom drinking. Right? And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to set this scene. The story I want to, to show is kind of the consequences of partying too hard. And so what is my scene going to be? Well, I can describe it. It's the aftermath of a teenage party, and it's going to be uh, like beer bottles, a trashed living room, and people passed out. Now that's the stage dressing that tells us the story, but it doesn't tell us time passing yet. Because I could just do a, a clear document of that. So here's the couch. It's all covered with stuff. There are bottles all over the floor. Here's a person passed out on the floor. And everything's in sharp focus. But that's like a postcard. You know, this would be a great college postcard. On the back it says, wish you were here. <laughs> But that doesn't tell a story, because for a story we need three things, right? We need character. And so our character, maybe the one we can most easily identify with, is the person that's passed out. We need a setting, and our setting is given just through all the debris. We know it's an interior. We can kind of tell from all the props what's happened. So it's the trashed living room. And But third, what we don't have here is the illusion of time passing. Instead, what we just see is a snapshot here. Now what we could do is do this photo exactly the same way, or exactly the same composition, three different times. And that could work for this project. So I'm not saying we zoom in or do anything. We do this exact same photo. Couch, passed out person, big mess. Couch. Passed out person, big mess. Couch, passed out person. Notice how I'm avoiding horizontals and verticals? <laughs> Even in simple sketches, it's a good idea. Big mess. OK. Now that just gives me three postcards. So how do I get the illusion of time passing? Well, I want to make some sort of visual decision that changes between this photo and this photo. And the way I'm going to do that is through my selective use of focus. 
and this is how I want you to draw your focus. And I'll do it in blue, but you can do this, do this all in just one color in your book. So I want you to indicate what's in focus by actually kind of showing us a light source on it with cross hatching. So in this picture, everything's going to be in focus. let's say. And so I would use little crosshatch marks on the couch to show that I want to see textural detail there. And the lighting's coming from this side. And on the person passed out, I would show I want to see textural detail on the person that's passed out. And I want to see textural detail on the beer bottles that are on the floor. And even on the wall behind that maybe has stains on it. And that the, the frame on the wall is, is hanging askew and then shadows of other passed out people in the background. I want them to be in sharp focus. So I use cross hatching. So cross hatching shadows means in focus. And so for this shot, you can also use words. So all in focus. Now how do I make this one different? Well in this one, the background's gonna be out of focus. And I'm gonna show that by making it a silhouette. So kind of like if it was shot on a black curtain, this would be what out of focus is. Is this office hours? Okay, sorry. So I wouldn't see the picture frame. I wouldn't see the guy that's passed out. Or if I would, they'd be very blurry and out of focus. Think of it like trees in the distance on a postcard where the trees are just silhouettes of shapes, right? But in the foreground, you have your Ford truck, and it's in sharp detail. OK, now what do I want to be in focus? Maybe I want uh, just the passed out figure in focus with kind of the beer bottle around. So all of this, even the couch, is all out of focus. So how many layers of depth is that? We have the, the passed out person in the foreground with the trash and the beer bottles in focus. And we have the background, the couch back to the hallway out of focus. How, yeah, two layers of depth. How many layers of depth is this? with everything in equal focus. Yeah, so one layer of depth here. Because this has to do with your depth of field, your use of focus to establish depth. Two layers of depth here. Now does that start to tell a story? Even though no one has moved? It does. Because it tells us, first we kind of look at everything together, and then we focus in on the person in the mess. Okay, and then in this third frame, I could look past the person passed out on the floor. And the way you do that is with just an empty outline. So if I erase within kind of the outline of the passed out person and an outline of the beer bottle on the floor, that means it's out of focus but in the foreground. And then if I focus on just the couch and all the trash around it, That's in focus. That's the middle ground. And then the background's out of focus. This gives me how many layers of depth? Three.
And this is what we need. as one of our shots in this series for this project. So black silhouette means out of focus background in your sketches. You'll get the hang of it. White silhouette just outlined strongly with nothing inside. That means out of focus foreground. And kind of hatched like it is in a lighting sketch means in focus, no matter where it is, foreground, background. Now here's the only problem with doing the exact same photo and just doing this focus pull. What kind of story does this tell? First we focus on the person, and then we focus on the mess. But it doesn't use the three layers of depth. I'll make that red, because this is the, the winning technique. It doesn't use the three layers of depth to really get us engaged in the story. So how can we best use it? Because it makes it seem like the couch is the most important thing to notice. Because it's the only one framed by focus. It's also a little boring not to have anything change in the shot. Not to change your, your camera angle, not to change your composition. Though it works for the technique of the assignment, we can do a lot more to establish a narrative that's kind of more interesting. And this is what I would suggest. Instead of this, for my three layers of depth, why don't I mix it up a little bit? You know, let's do it this way. And introduce something new into the scene. Something that's been there the whole time, but using focus, it will make it more clear. So I start by doing a very similar composition, but maybe it's a zoomed in a little bit. So the person who's passed out is a little bit bigger and overlapping the couch a little bit more. And maybe the person who's passed out is, is like a teenage girl and there's beer bottles around her. And she looks kind of awkward. And the couch, we're seeing the legs of the couch and the cushions, and it's all dirty. And all of this is in focus. So we've just zoomed in a little bit. So how do I show that? By just using some cross hatching to kind of indicate maybe a lighting source and to show that we want to see all that texture and detail. So here, I'm focusing on the girl and the couch, but the background and the hallway behind the couch is going to be out of focus. You guys with me? All make sense so far? So that's two layers of depth, right? But now I'm going to introduce something that was just off frame in these other two. And it's going to be this creepy hand coming into the foreground. Because not everyone is passed out. There's this creepy hand coming into the frame. That's out of focus in the foreground. And even though it's out of focus, we can tell from the shape of it, it's a man's hand. You just wonder, okay, what is that out of focus hand gonna do to the passed out girl on the couch that's in the in the frame? So I have to change up my little notes here, because now this is in focus. To really make dramatic use of the three layers of depth. And this is out of focus, but foreground. This hand. 
Do we think that that makes better use of this three layers of depth to make it feel like that's the pinnacle moment? 